We edit an image until we get it how we like it. And then we send it to the printer and we get something like this. So what happened and how do we fix it? Let's find out. Hello amigos, this is Pablo Garcia, the engineer photographer. Today we're going to talk about why we get dark prints. I don't know about you, but I find it very frustrating after working on an image, send it to the printer and the image is dark. Sometimes the colors are wrong too, but this time we're just going to talk about when the image is dark. So why does that happen? Well, there are two reasons. The first one has to do with our monitor. And our monitor is basically a light source. The light is shining directly from the monitor to our eyes. And the brighter the monitor, the darker our print is going to be. Many monitors, straight out of the box, will be extremely bright. They're not properly calibrated for us photographers. And at times, it may look like we're looking directly into a flashlight. So what is an appropriate level of brightness? And the appropriate level really is between 90 to 100 candelas per square meter. Candela per square meter is the unit of luminance, basically the amount of light that comes out of the monitor per unit of the square area. So 90 to 100 candelas per square meter. Most monitors straight out the box may be 150 to 100 and sometimes even higher. So we need to get that perceived luminance, which is the brightness, down to a more appropriate level between 90 to 100. So how do we do that? Well, we need to use a device like the Color Monkey or Data Color Spider X. And these devices, in addition to allowing us to calibrate the colors of our monitor, also take a measure of the luminance of the monitor. And then using the monitor controls, you know, you'll see buttons on the side or on the bottom of the monitor usually. You can then dial down the, the luminance to the level that I'm telling you between 90 to 100. At first, those levels may seem a little dark to you, but if you're in a room where the monitor doesn't have direct light, which I think most of us have our monitor set up that way, 90 to 100 candelas per square meter is a great level to ensure that our prints are not going to be as dark. They may still be a little dark, but now we're going to be right in the ballpark. Now, one problem with these devices is that they cost between $150 to $200, depending on the model. So they're not inexpensive. But if you're serious about editing images and about printing, I think it's a worthwhile investment. And you can find sometimes sales and get the price a little bit uh, cheaper. What happens if you don't have a device like this or you cannot afford one? Well, now you have to experiment. You can just reduce the brightness of your monitor a bit, maybe 10, 20%, take a break, come back, see if it still looks bright to you, reduce it a bit again, uh, do it two or three times until the monitor starts to look maybe a little dark and then go back to a preview setting. Without a specific device and measure the luminance, the only way that you have is just to do trial and error and reduce the brightness two or three times in incremental steps. The second issue has to do with the print itself. Unlike the monitor, we now don't have direct light coming you know, from the print into our eye. We really have indirect light. We're going to have some kind of light source, light coming through a window, sometimes a bulb, uh, shining light on the print, the light is then reflected into our eye and that's how we perceive the photo. How bright the photo looks to us will depend on a number of things, including how bright is that initial light source and how it's hitting the photo. And it will also depend on the type of paper that we're using. So glossy paper, semi-gloss, luster paper will reflect more light than matte paper. Also, where we place the photo in the room. If we place the photo in an area that is dark, we may need on purpose to make a lighter print. If we put it in an area that gets a lot of light, then we can make the opposite adjustment and get it to look right under those light conditions. In summary, two things, right? Adjusting the brightness of our monitor to 90 to 100 candelas per square meter is a good level. I had mine set up to 92. 
And the second one is then on the print, making adjustments to the print. Now, how do we do the adjustments to the print? So, so for those of us that use Lightroom, if we come to the print module, you know, besides allowing us to change paper and placement of the photo on the paper, we can come all the way to the bottom and you're gonna see an area called the print job. And under the print job, there is a print adjustment and you can enable that and basically allows you to add an offset for brightness and contrast, independent of whatever adjustments we did in the develop module. For me, for a luster semi-gloss paper, I typically use a brightness of 15 and a contrast of five. That seems to work very well with my monitor calibrated the 92 candles per square meter. That gives me a great initial start. With a matte paper like uh, Epson cold press right, I need to be at something like 25 points of brightness and maybe six to 10 points of contrast. And you just need to do a couple of test prints. Uh, but once you dial in the appropriate levels of print adjustment, you can then create a print profile that captures everything you had done until now. So provided you don't change the brightness of the monitor, then using the print profile will allow you to get good prints from now on. I hope you found these suggestions very useful and helpful in getting you to get great prints. Thank you for watching my channel. And I'll leave you here with this video I did with nine tips on using the new mass tool in Lightroom. Thanks again. Please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Send your comments and I'll see you next time.